What's up ladies and gentlemen, David here and today I'm going to give you another 5 tips and tricks for Sonar Platinum. Now before we jump into this today, I just want to point out that a couple of days ago I hit 100 subscribers and I know that is nothing compared to most YouTubers today but I am excited nonetheless. So for you guys who are already subscribed to me right now, thank you so much, I really appreciate it and if you aren't subscribed to me, what are you doing man, subscribe to the channel. Like yes, right now, right now, oh wait. Alright, so now that that's out of the way, let's get to the video. Now as I said, I'm going to give you another 5 tips to Sonar Platinum today. And as always, all of these uh, tips and tricks that you're going to see are available in Sonar X1, 2, and 3, and Platinum, unless specified otherwise. So just keep an eye out for that. And that's pretty much all that I had to say, so let's get to it. Insert Send Assistant is a feature that allows you to insert a bus or a send into your DAW quickly and easily. So let's use this snare track as an example. I want to add a reverb on this snare, but I want to put it on a bus rather than put it on the track itself. So normally you could go to Sends and insert a stereo bus here, or you could right click in the bus window and insert a bus there, and then do your routing and add your plugins. But I'm going to show you an easier way to do that and that's with the Insert Send Assistant. So go to your Insert just like you normally would, and we're gonna go down to Send Assistant. It's gonna bring up this dialog. So this is asking if you wanna send it to an existing bus. No, we wanna create a new one. So we're gonna to go to New Bus, we're gonna keep it on the master output, and we're gonna name it Snare Verb, if I can spell, there we go. So right here we're gonna choose the effect that we want to put on that bus. So for me it's a reverb, we're gonna to go to this regular Sonar Reverb here, and this Show Effect Property page is asking you if if when you click OK, do you want this plugin to expand? Do you want the plugin to open up so you could make your changes right away? And we want yes for that. Now on this Match Tracks Pan and Gain, this is asking if you want to match the panning of the track and match the gain of the track onto the bus channel itself. And you can also set Pre and Post Fader here. So we're not going to do any of that. We're going to hit OK. And the plugin has expanded, the plugin has opened for us, and we can make our changes. And as you can see, the snare is already routed into the proper send. So let's turn down the dry signal here and see if it worked. And that's it, guys. Turn off the send, and it's working perfectly, it's routed perfectly, and you did it quickly. The nudge feature is a very simple feature, but it's very effective. It simply allows you to move around clips within the edit window in very small increments. So let's say you have a vocal track that came in a little too late. Instead of zooming in and perfectly lining it to the grid, you can just kind of nudge it back into place and let your ears be the judge, which actually turns out to be a lot quicker. So let's look at this vocal track as an example. This is a demo I'm working on for my band actually. And this vocal track, as you're gonna hear, comes in a hair too soon. So here's what it sounds like. So it's not huge, but it's it's enough for you to notice. So to nudge this back into place, we're gonna click on the track, or click on the actual clip itself, excuse me. We're gonna go up here to process, and then down to nudge. So you have all these options on the increments in which you want to nudge that clip. So. 1, 2, and 3 is 1 being the smallest increment, 3 being the highest, and then you can also nudge it up and down, which is going to move it between tracks, just like that. Now, while we're in this window, if you actually click on the settings, you can see what actual increments the nudges are working at. So the nudge 1 is 10 milliseconds, nudge 2 is 1 frame, nudge 2 is 2 frames. You can change these to whatever you want them to be, but I've gotten used to them, so I prefer to leave them at the stock uh, sonar settings. So this one, because I've gone to learn these so well, this sounds like a nudge 3 to me. So we're going to move it to the right for the nudge 3 increment. And here's what it sounds like. So that's perfect now. That's all it took to do it. And to take this another step and make it even easier, we're going to go back up to process and look at the shortcuts. So if you have a numeric 10 key on your computer keyboard, you can actually use these 
uh, numeric shortcuts to nudge them just by pressing the number on your keyboard. So, for example, as the 10 key you're seeing right here, the 1, 4, and the 7 are the nudge 1, 2, and 3 to the left. The 3, 6, and 9 are the nudge 1, 2, and 3 to the right. And then the 8 is the nudge up and the 2 is the nudge down. So while you're working, if you see a track that's out of place, you can just boom, hit nudge 4 on the keyboard and it's fixed. It's really going to speed up your workflow and it's just really going to make your life a lot easier. So the custom module is a feature that's only allowed in Sonar Platinum at the moment. And that is this module right here. It allows you to assign certain commands and shortcuts into these nine spaces up here. So you have quick and easy access to them. Now, right off the bat, if you don't see this module in your control bar, go ahead and click in any empty space on the control bar or click on these, uh, these lines on the left side that allow you to move them around. And that will uh, show you the modules option. Right here, I have selected all the modules that I want to see. So make sure that custom module is selected and you should see it up here in the control bar. So let me show you how to use it. I am going to assign, assign a new command here. So we're going to right click on any empty box and it'll show you the options of stuff you can assign to this shortcut. So we're going to go to many items. I want to assign reverse to this. So process, apply effect and reverse. So right there, that is assigned that reverse shortcut into my custom module, and uh, let's reverse this vocal take. So go up here, hit reverse, and it's done. So that keeps you from having to go into process and then apply effect and, and look for it through the actual menu windows. And just to make sure it worked, I'm going to embarrass my vocalist here. Uh, well, it worked. It sounds really weird, but it worked. So it's really easy to use and it's going to save you a lot of time. Even if it's a second here or there, it adds up. The MIDI controller pane is a feature that allows you to easily manipulate the MIDI velocities inside of the piano roll. So I'm going to give you an example to show you exactly what I'm talking about. I have this snare roll thing here and uh, each note is, uh, is 100 as far as velocity goes and they are 16th notes at 140 BPM. So it sounds incredibly fake. So my goal with this is to have kind of like a soft alternating snare pattern. And I'm, I'm not joking here. The way I used to do this is to go up to select and right click each note and change the velocity. It was incredibly time consuming and uh, just, just don't do that. So I'm going to show you how to do it with the MIDI controller pane. We're going to go up here to view and show hide controller pane. That switch is just kind of like a toggle. And down here, it's going to show you each of the velocities of every note inside of the piano roll. And we're going to go over here to draw, right click and make sure it's on freehand. And allow, that allows you to just go in and draw new velocities for each note. It's super quick and it's just the easiest way to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create that snare pattern right here and show you how quick I can do this using this tool. some random notes for this and I'm going to copy this onto the next bar and here we go. Now obviously I could do a little more with that to kind of hone in the realism but uh, using this tool is insanely easy and it just makes your life a lot quicker while working with MIDI and just dialing in those velocities. Navigator is a really simple trick that allows you to honestly navigate around your mix and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about here in a second. So looking at this mix, this is a demo and it's not even fully done and I'm at 59 tracks. Yes, there's a few not being used, but overall I have at least 50 tracks here and there's probably going to be more as I continue the song. So once you're kind of zoomed in and maybe working on a specific clip, it can be a hassle to navigate around the around the mix and kind of get to different parts quickly. So that's where the navigator comes in. We're going to go up to view and hit navigator show slash hide, or you could use alt N as a shortcut. And that's going to bring up this window, which basically shows a tiny version of your entire mix window. And wherever you click is where it will take you. So let's say I'm working on the intro right here. Scroll down a little bit and click on the intro. I have the tracks right there and I say, okay, I need to, I need to jump and do some editing on the solo. 
then I can jump over to the solo over here. And you can just kind of drag this box around and move around your mix really easily and really quickly. So that kind of makes it um, a little easier and it just, it helps with organization. So definitely give that a shot. It helps me a lot. And all right guys, that's it. That's the five tips and tricks I'm gonna give you today. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this and I really hope you learned something from it. Now I'm gonna keep these videos going on in the future. The last one did really, really well. And even if I can teach one person something new and even help one person get a better mix or a better workflow, that's all I really care about. So I'm gonna do these as much as I possibly can. So that's where I'm gonna end it today, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and once again, thank you to those 100 people who subscribed to me. It seriously means a lot, and if you are not subscribed yet, please don't forget to like and subscribe. There's new videos every single week, and you don't want to miss any content. So once again, guys, thank you so much for watching. My name is David, and I'll see you next time.